Are you in a relationship? Yeah. I'm in several. <laughs> I used to be like that. Yeah. I rode every horse on the carousel until I met Drew. Tully highlights the harsh truth between prime women and post-war women. The rise of depressed women. Shout out to subscriber Treacherous J. Slitter for recommending this movie to us. Definitely a movie that provides food for thought. Salute! Now before we get into the foolishness, I will briefly give you my opinion on the film in general. Tully is another quirky and disarmingly human dramedy about the sharp edges of ordinary life. I use the word quirky because they used it in the film to describe Marlowe's son, Jonah, who suffers from some form of autism. They never say that in the movie though. It's always, he's quirky, he's quirky. Is it politically incorrect to call someone autistic? Jonah. What does that mean? Kids like Jonah. Well, he's quirky and he, oh he needs God. a- What is this quirky thing everybody keeps saying? It's so stupid, what does it even mean? Do I have a kid or a ukulele? But I digress. Marlo is played by Charlize Theron and she plays a solid role of a mother at the end of a rope who sees the help of a night nanny as salvation. And I have to say, if this role had been played by a mediocre actress, this movie would have been terrible. Charlize Theron gives this movie those extra points to make this movie worthwhile. The somewhat disappointing plot development does little to diminish the rare honest observations about motherhood and coming of age. The writer Diablo Cody, who is a woman by the way, fails to forge the story into a whole. The movie ends with this, what happened, now what, kind of vibe. Overall I was not irritated with an angry effinist woke narrative that marriage story and wife like had. The movie is so strongly focused on the bond between the two ladies that Marlo's husband is given far too little attention but this is not without reason. The movie wouldn't work if the husband was involved with everything. So if you love this actress, you should definitely give this movie a shot because she makes this movie. Now let's get into the foolishness. There is one particular aspect of this movie that we want to highlight from a Red Pill perspective. It's basically the dynamic between young versus old and we're gonna break it up in three parts. Prime versus post-war narrative. The unromantic truth about relationships. My opinion on the rise of depressed women. Shout out to the Patreon gang, salute! The original video is gonna be on Patreon because we have to respect the YouTube guidelines. That's why you will get a censored and filtered YouTube friendly version. Certain clips will be frozen or excluded. So if you like what we do and you want to experience our content to the fullest extent, support us on Patreon. This video contains a lot of spoilers, so you've been warned. Now it's time for us to get into this and do what we gotta do, because we meant it, we... She... This clip shows exactly the point of this chapter, and we're gonna let Marlo explain what we just saw. I bet you have big plans. I mean, your 20s are great. They are. But then your 30s come around the corner like a garbage truck at 5 a.m. Yeah. What are you gonna do when that cute little butt of yours drops and your feet grow a half a size with each pregnancy and this whole free spirit thing? It stops being charming and it just starts to look ugly. When you age, you are forced to grow up, even if you don't want to. Your system prevents you from doing the things that you used to do. Look at LeBron James. He's in great shape, but he can't play defense like he used to. Defending takes the most energy. Take a look at this clip. <laughs> You cannot party as hard as you used to, and to take it a step further, you don't want to party like you used to. Your system is going to let you know in the morning. Now she says something powerful. See, and this whole free spirit thing, 
It stops being charming and it just starts to look ugly. Let's take it a step further. Are you in a relationship? Yeah, I'm in several. <laughs> I used to be like that. Yeah, I rode every horse on the carousel until I met Drew. And which horse was Drew? Drew was a bench. This is pure gold, as this film hammers home the many contrasts between Marlo and Tully. Young versus mature, free versus bonded, energetic versus overtired. This is what it looks like when a post-war woman still rides the hot dog carousel. I'm not a relationship person, I cannot wait to die alone, and I date younger men casually and recreationally for I want to help redefine what society thinks an older woman should look like, be like, dress like, act like, work like, date like, and like. It's exactly what Marlowe said. It stops being charming and it starts looking ugly. In this interview, the 61-year-old takes her clothes off and it's just disgusting. <laughs> and that's another important aspect why women cannot do what they used to do. Check this out. Sure, you want water with that? No, I'm thirsty, not dirty. I got it. God. I remember when guys used to look at me like that. He was looking at you. Nobody wants to f mommy, okay? There's an entire genre of porn dedicated to exactly that. <laughs> when a woman hits the wall, the well runs dry. When she was in her prime, riding the hot dog carousel, she had access to Chad's and Tyrone's. When women complain about being invisible, they mean they are invisible to Chad and Tyrone. That's why she married the bench warmer. More about that in the next chapter. You can see that there is a difference in mentality between prime effinists and post-war effinists. Women in their 20s will sound like this. I don't need a man. I am strong and independent while they ride the hot dog carousel. Women in their 30s sound like, where did all the good men go? And women in their 40s, single and lonely and just can't seem to settle for an average joke. That's why this movie gets a plus for keeping it 100 in that regard. Well, I should go. I should get this coffee home before it gets as cold and black as my womb. I'm not afraid of the future. Oh my God. You should be. You're convinced that you're this failure, but you actually made your biggest dream come true. Oh my, what? That sameness that you despise. That's your gift to them. Waking up every day and doing the same things for them over and over. You are boring. Your marriage is boring. Your house is boring. But that's fucking incredible. That's the big dream to grow up and be dull and constant and then raise your kids in that circle of safety. I'm not safe. I'm scared. Marlo! In modern times, we have forgotten the true purpose of relationships. Marlo says, I don't feel safe. I'm scared. Which is interesting because we live in the safest times in human history. So what is so scary in modern times? What are women afraid of? It's a couple of things and that's where the pyramid of Maslow comes in. Let's start with the basic needs. I used to be like that. Yeah. I rode every horse on the carousel until I met Drew. And which horse was Drew? Drew was a bench. But you love him. Yeah. No. Definitely. I know I picked the right person. Drew, aka Benchwarmer, aka Cleanup Man, provides basic needs. Women know what a quote unquote good man is. Does Drew ever ask about me? Yeah. I mean, he finds the whole thing a little weird. Yeah. Does he like being a dad? Sure. The way dads do. I mean, he works really hard and then he comes home. He does the homework, the reading logs, all that. We make lunches together. And then he goes upstairs, puts on a headset, kills zombies and passes out. 
Drew, aka Benchwarmer, does exactly what he needs to do, which is provide the basic needs for his family. This is why more than 50% of women in relationships have a backup partner in case they separate from their current partner. This is why women do not go their own way and why they have a problem with men taking their talents overseas because women need us to provide them with the basic needs. Even if they make six figures a year, they are still looking to date up. Stop giving these women free attention, guys. Stop warming the bench. She mentioned riding the hot dog carousel, but she ended up marrying the bench warmer. This is the unromantic truth. Most women will never marry Prince Charming. Consider yourself lucky when you're able to lock down a Prince Charming because they are rare, Larsa Pippen. Now the bench warmer also provides a part of the psychological needs, which are the belongingness and love needs. But here's the problem. You guys don't ever have sex? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, not in months. I mean, it's like we both want dinner. We just can't pick a restaurant or even decide if we're hungry. Oh, well, why don't you guys just talk about it? Relationships are hard work. You will have ups and downs guaranteed. Riding the hot dog carousel is not impressive. It's easy and that's exactly why it's women that prefer hookup culture because it's an easy way out. When women lose that get out of jail free card when they hit the wall and they can't run and avoid responsibility like they used to. Motherhood is often a difficult phase in a woman's life. Suddenly the fun life she had before becomes one full of obligations she can't escape. You have to divide your time better and for some this is more difficult than others. Moreover, it also does a lot to her body. She's just not as sexy as she used to be. The things that used to work in the past might not work in the future and the reason why it's women that initiate 70 to 80 percent of divorces is because they are the ones with less to lose. They will most likely walk away with the bag, but that doesn't mean that they will be able to replace their ex-husbands, Larsa Pippen. And that's scary because you can't have it all. You can't have it both ways. It's funny that in modern times, the quote unquote good things are considered boring and not worth having because the focus lies on intensity. Everything must be intense and it has gotten to the point where being at ease has become uncomfortable. Relationships are about trust, security, routine, peace of mind, and we can't make a soap opera episode if everything is right, if there's no drama. Good relationships are not what you see on television. Everything is dramatized, romanticized. It's not real. Which one? My roommate. Oh, yeah, she's a uh, she's a troublemaker. <laughs> Historically, those have been my favorite people. She just freaks out every time I bring a guy home. Is she religious or something? Spends a lot of time kneeling in front of a toilet. Can you get your own place? We're kind of enmeshed. Just don't make it personal. Why don't you just tell her you want to change the scenery? Why? Why do I have to lie to her? Why can't I just be honest and say that we're better off without each other? Because you'll hurt her. And if you hurt her, you'll regret it. Girls don't heal. Girls heal. No, we don't. We might look like we're all better, but if you look close, we're covered in concealer. This is pure gold. And this is the biggest spoiler of the movie. You've been warned. Tully is actually the imaginary younger version of Marlo. You can compare it to Fight Club. This is interesting because the younger version thinks everything will be fine. Not realizing the psychological and emotional damage she's inflicting on herself by having multiple relationships at the same time. Marlo tells her younger self exactly what these FNs refuse to tell these women. They will not heal. Most women figure this out the hard way. 
emotional and psychological abuse can have serious short and long-term consequences. Studies show that severe emotional abuse can be as powerful as physical abuse. Over time, both can contribute to low self-esteem and depression. You may experience feelings of anxiety, confusion, shame, guilt, frequent crying, powerlessness, etc. And you will need help to deal with these things. Therapy will not cure you. And what I mean by that is that you will never be the same. Therapy helps you deal with the problems you have and deal with the damage that has been done. You can recover, but you will never be the same. That's why prevention is better than cure. Unfortunately, Western society doesn't educate women on the consequences of their actions. College seemed to set a lot of women up for depression in the future. Check this out. What do you do? Human resources, the company that makes protein bars. My English lit degree really paid off. Okay. Uh, so what did you want to do? I mean, if I had a dream that didn't come true, I could at least be pissed off at the world. Instead, I'm just pissed off at myself. You're empty. Yeah. No, you're empty on this side. She's dead. <sighs> you're okay. We talk about one in four women being on antidepressants. And I truly believe this number will only increase in the future. In this movie, Marlo suffers from postpartum depression. This clip is a great indication of how women are not prepared for the future. Only 27% of college graduates are working in a field they majored in. In other words, most people will never work their dream job. And to take it a step further, women are more likely to burn out than men and quit their jobs. Men naturally handle pressure and stress better than women. These effinists told women that it would be all fun and games joining the workforce trying to have it all. Sex and the City added to this fairy tale of independent career women drinking cocktails and riding the cocktail carousel leading to happiness. The writer came out regretting choosing a career over children. This woman is a boomer. For millennials and Gen Zs, this is gonna hit different. Check this out. Mm. It's a reality TV show called Gigolos. <laughs> What's it about? Gigolos. The validation, the attention from these Chads and Tyrones are still of importance to the ex hot dog carousel riders. So let's get back to the Maslow pyramid. Esteem needs. At the fourth level in Maslow's hierarchy is the need for appreciation and respect. Once the need at the bottom three levels have been satisfied, the esteem needs begin to play a more prominent role in motivating behavior. At this level, it becomes increasingly important to gain the respect and appreciation of others. People have a need to accomplish things, then have their efforts recognized. In addition to the need for feelings of accomplishment and prestige, esteem needs include such things as self-esteem and personal worth. We made a video about a woman who deleted herself because she lost her identity. And she said something interesting. Although I do realize that uh, not being a sexual object anymore does make a huge difference. I'm somebody who has uh, been brought up in France, in Paris, where seduction is a big part of our personality. And so if I lose my power of seduction, uh, I'm a bit at a loss. With these dating apps, with social media that have become part of our daily lives, women have become addicted to this abundance of attention from men. Millennials are turning 40, 41 this year. The oldest millennial is 41 years old. We made a video about women explaining they deserve dinner dates because of the way they look. Their personal worth is based on appearance and of course the abundance of attention they get from men just by uploading a freaking selfie on Instagram. A whole lot of women will be forced to go cold turkey and live a life without this abundance of attention. You already see the effects of women not getting what they want. They are trying to adapt. Soft girl era. And it's too late. The cat is out of the bag. We've seen female nature. 
once you've seen it, you cannot unsee it. The pandemic was just the tip of the iceberg of what's coming. You better get yourself a nice and warm coat because winter is coming. Now as men, we are expected to deal with this. That's how it's always been. Don't expect handouts. That's why you have to protect yourself at all times. That's why you have to prepare yourself at all times. We got to do what we got to do because we men ain't we. She. Man, that's where we working. Protect yourself at all times. This video has officially been highlighted.